Tim Panasic for Gibbons Motor Toys. Today we're going to show you different steering systems that are available on boats. So what we're looking at here is we've actually got three boats lined up. We've got an 1850 uh, Staby Craft with mechanical steering. We've got a 9, 195 Coyote Laker that's got the Dometic Extreme Power Assist Steering. And we've got a Staby Craft 2050 here with hydraulic steering. We have a fourth boat, which we'll get to. It's not in the showroom right here, which is gonna have EPS, uh, which is electric power steering as well. So on that note, we'll start with the uh, mechanical steering or work our way up. Okay, starting with mechanical cable steering. This steering system has been around for many years, still works great. Typically gonna be used on uh, boats of say 20 feet and smaller, and typically with horsepowers of less than 150. So the helms all actually look very similar. There are different options, of course, with tilt helms, et cetera. This doesn't have that. But as far as you know, the helm, they're gonna look similar across the board. We'll show you the other ones when we get there. But as far as you know, how this functions, basically all, all we have is mechanical cable going to a mechanical rod, as you can see there. And uh, that's about as simple as it gets. So with mechanical systems, there are a couple of different types. You can get what's called a rotary helm. You can get a rack helm. Uh, you can get different gear ratios. You can uh, also have dual cable steering, which you would have seen in the older days for higher horsepower applications. Because typically, once you get to 150 horsepower and greater, then mechanical cables do not suffice. Uh, as far as reliability and simplicity, this is the least expensive. I'll also mention that uh, there is an option of anti-feedback uh, rotary and, and uh, rack and pinion helms. And the way that you can tell one from the other is that if it's got uh, anti-feedback, when I grab the engine, if I can't move it, as in this case, like I could push on this as hard as I want, and I can't make this turn the wheel. So that does offer another level of safety, meaning that if the uh, driver got uh, thrown from the wheel, whatever position that steering wheel is in, the engine's gonna stay in that position. If this didn't have anti-feedback, what would happen is I would be able to turn this engine back and forth. And if somebody behind the wheel got thrown away from that wheel, that wheel can totally flip all the way, one way or the other, depending on the torque, water conditions, so this just makes for a bit of a safer system with the anti-feedback. On that note, we'll move to the next boat, showing you the next system. Next up, we're gonna go jump into a hydraulic steering system. And the reason for that is that in terms of price, hydraulic steering is gonna be your next most affordable option. So the difference here is that hydraulic versus cable steering, the hydraulic steering is definitely easier for me to turn here. So less effort involved because of course we got the advantage of hydraulics. Uh, the other thing is, is that instead of having a cable through here, you can see that we've just got hydraulic lines that we can run pretty much anywhere. So hydraulic hoses are gonna take up less space. The helm is pretty much the same. It's not much more uh, space taken up there. The other thing that does have to be considered that I probably should have mentioned with the mechanical steering is if we're going to be tying, a, if we're going to have a dual engine application or a kicker tied to this, there are things to consider there as well. In this case, to add a kicker engine, what we do is we have a bracket that bolts on to this existing hardware here. With the mechanical steering, typically what you do is you have a bracket that would attach to the cable that was exposed on the port side. And that's something to consider on all boats, you know, whether the kicker brackets on the port, starboard side, and what kind of steering system is gonna go along with that. So another thing to keep in mind for sure when choosing that steering system. So I explained the advantages to hydraulic steering. The uh, potential disadvantages to hydraulic steering is that uh, the helms can capture air. Um, Typically, what we'll see is, you know, even though the systems are well bled and purged of all air, when the sun comes out, if it's beaten on the helm, that will typically cause the oil to expand. So you could have some leakage there. And there is, you know, we see it a few times a year where a helm or a cylinder could fail because you still do have mechanical parts with the oil and with the seals and the valves, et cetera. 
Overall though, hydraulic steering has been around for a long time. It was the go-to for the last several years. It's just, there's been some advancements with electric steering, which we're gonna get to next, that uh, are more expensive than hydraulic, but it's like anything else, you kind of get what you pay for, and we'll explain those features on the next boat. So next up in order of price is the Dometic Extreme Power Assist. The way this works is we're back to our cable steering. So this has just got a cabled helm like we showed you in the first place. And uh, what we have is an electric actuator that you can see that's added there. So what I'm gonna do here is turn the key on. And then now this is turned electrically. So basically what you got is you've got the assist of electric steering without hydraulics or oil. We're still utilizing a mechanical cable. So the beauty of this is this can be added to any system that has mechanical, or most systems that have mechanical steering. You've got lots of provisions of tying a kicker tie bar to here. Again, you'd want your kicker on the uh, port side for this system to work. It, you can probably utilize something for the starboard side, but it would be more work. The advantage of this over the hydraulic system is that it's uh, very simple. Again, no oil, less moving parts. You just have this electric steering uh, actuator here, and uh, you're really not adding much for weight, and it's just a very simple system that gives you a larger mechanical advantage than what hydraulic steering does. So as an example, if you have a boat that's say going maybe 15 miles an hour in a hard turn where the boat's laid over and you've got the steering wheel cranked all the way, with mechanical steering, you're definitely gonna be needing two hands and maybe then some to straighten that boat out in that position. With hydraulic steering, it's gonna be easier, but it's still gonna be a little bit of uh, work. With this system, you're pretty much uh, just very less effort, pretty much a one hand job to correct it from that situation. So the mechanical advantage would be the advantage to this electric system that uh, Dometic has, what they call the extreme power steering assist. Next up is gonna be the EPS system, which uh, we'll get to here next. Okay, so we're using a Stabycraft 2250 that we just uh, rigged here with a uh, 250 Mercury V8 engine. It's also got a kicker on it, so we're going to be able to show you that as well. And this is the uh, EPS system from Dometic, so it stands for Electric Power Steering. And this is the premium steering system available today. It's uh, definitely a pile more money, but uh, we'll show you why it is and what features you get with it. I've been pretty fortunate the last couple of years to uh, test drive most of our boats. I can say hands down that this is a, a really, really great experience. Uh, it's expensive as heck, but uh, in my opinion, well worth the money. One thing you have to consider is when you're in any boat, if you got the engine running and it's in gear, there's nothing that you use more than your steering wheel. It doesn't matter if it's your controls, it doesn't matter if it's your fish finder, your steering wheel is being moved all the time, whether it's the main helm, the auxiliary helm. So think about that. Anytime your boat's in gear, you're using your steering. So that's why I think that a lot of uh, consideration should be given to making sure you got the best steering system for your application and your budget. Uh, one thing I should have mentioned too is with the uh, uh, extreme assist steering that we showed you that it gets attached to the mechanical cables, that that uh, steering system is capable of working on engines from 90 to 200 horsepower. We typically will use that on engines from 90 to 150 horse. Once we get bigger than 150 horse, we're either using hydraulic steering or we're using the EPS electric steering. So diving right into this, this display comes with it. You can see the engine's not running. We got zero RPMs. I've just uh, turned on the key prior to starting here. Right now, our rudder is showing zero degrees. If I turn this port, you're going to see right away, it's going to start showing us how many degrees we're turned to port. It's going to go right up to 30 degrees. We're going to go back to uh, zero here. And the cool part about this is, is that, you know, even with a boat like this, you got a bulkhead in the back. If you can't see your engine, you're trying to load on a trailer as an example, and you can see that you need to get your bow a little bit one way or the other. It's pretty nice being able to look here and see in that, hey, I'm just uh, turned a little bit to the left or looking here and knowing that you're just turned a couple degrees, two or three degrees to the right. So I find that really helpful. Same thing, 
the faster you turn the wheel, the more battery power it consumes. So if I turn it really fast, it's going to use a few more amps versus if I turn it slow. And the beauty of that is when you're trolling, or underway for that fact, most often you're not grabbing the wheel and whizzing it back and forth. So the power consumption with this electric power steering system is very minimal. That's another uh, point that should be uh, taken seriously as well as what your battery power capacity is. So that being said, um, I think we can uh, move and to the stern and we'll just show you how this system works. I'll turn it back and forth and you can take a look at the actuator and how this uh, differentiates. And the nice part here is we've got the tie bar to the kicker so you can see how that works. And you can see just how smooth the system works. The other advantage to this is that all we've got is electrical wires that you can see that come up to the actuator. There's no oil, no hydraulics. So we can run those electrical wires from almost anywhere. So they obviously take up way less space. It's a much neater rig. The tie bar, you can see how well and how efficient that works. My kicker could be up, down, any position. It just works flawlessly. So to summarize, the EPS system does come at a premium price. Another real key advantage to the EPS system is that we can program how many turns lock to lock we have. So basically when the boat is not on step, so in other words, if you're fishing, if you're trolling, if you're loading the boat on a trailer, if you're docking it, we have it so that the gear ratio is set so that it's approximately three turns lock to lock. So that just makes for a really quick steering system. It gives you better boat control at slow speeds. Once we're above approximately 3,000 RPMs where the boat's on step, the steering ratio is then programmed so that it turns to an approximately five to one. So in other words, if you're on rough water and you bump the wheel to the side because you catch a wave, the engine's hardly gonna move. So it makes for a much safer experience. Um, if we have twin engines in this system, the other thing that it'll do is we can adjust our tow-in. We can adjust the tow-in so that when the boat is not on step, your engines are actually zero tow-in. So everything, your kicker and your both your main engines line up exactly together. Once the engine is on step, we'll have it set so that they tow in approximately one and a half degrees. And the reason for that is, is on a B-bottomed boat, the water tends to flare out. And if you were to have twin engines and you took a steering bar away from the engines and let the other engine follow, you'll find that the engines will typically, on most V-bottoms, one to one and a half degrees is where they'll tow in. So in other words, the engines are working, the gear case is working with the uh, dynamics of the water, so there's less drag, meaning you burn less fuel, better efficiency, and just better overall handling. Also with this EPS system, this does have a dual station. So with this auxiliary station, it does everything that we just showed you up front. So all those features are available on this helm as well. And the other big advantage is that you'll never have to worry about adding oil, getting air into your system. The system is going to be super easy to use. The boat can be banked in the hardest corner. It's always going to be basically one figure control to get the boat out of any position. So the steering is just absolutely as smooth as can be in all conditions. Hopefully this video has helped you out to, to understand the difference in uh, steering systems and what your options are. You know, remember to consider if you're having a kicker, no kicker, twins, single, the boat application, the horsepower, that's where our service team can certainly help you out and uh, get you to make the best decision so that you get the best value for your money.